Hello everybody, welcome back to Project Nasa Slope. Today in this video, I'm going to be completely disassembling this OM606 and getting it ready to swap in all new gaskets, new main bearings, new piston rings, new rod bearings, new rods. Almost this entire engine is going to be completely refreshed and rebuilt. Stay tuned, let's get started. Something that I do to pull out these pins right here and that hold the timing chain, the timing chain, timing chain guide is I have a long 10 mil that has thread all the way through. And then I just grab a whole bunch of these 19s, stack them over it, screw the 10 in. And when it's tight in there, I just start screwing this 10 in so it, when the 10 goes that way, it pulls the pin out and then it comes out fully. And then if, if anything, I just add another nut so it pulls out further. But then by, normally by this time, it, it comes out enough to where I can just pull it out. And I gotta do another one inside here. Look at that. Oh. That's that's how easy it is. There's the second one. I don't have the right tools. I need a socket. And that fits onto this uh, 12 point 12.9 I think off the hopper freight we go Got the tools. Time to start taking off these glow plugs. A lot of people have a lot of problems with these glow plugs. Uh, getting just uh, throughout the years, obviously they're old, corrosion and other stuff like that make it really difficult to, to take them off. So let's see how these are. First one is perfect fine. It looks pretty new. Maybe someone recently changed them. This, keep in mind, this engine has 275,000 miles. So that was really, really easy to take out. Yep. They don't look like they've been like sitting in the engine for too long. Nice. I don't even I don't think I even have to replace them. So I have this socket that's specifically for these really for the, the pre-chamber hold down things. I don't know exactly what they're called, but all I know is that it's a very it's necessary. If, you're, if you want to take out your pre-chambers. I'm gonna take out the pre-chambers right now because when I send it to the machine shop, they don't have the tools to do it. So I'll just unscrew everything right now. I don't have the actual uh, correct tool. I have the, the 603 uh, th thread for the pre-chambers, then this is a 606 thread on an injector that's connected to a 603 pre-chamber. So this 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 injector is cracked, but I don't think this is not a 60. 
six injector. This is a 140, like W140, uh, 603 injector. So it's the 3.5. This is the injector from that engine. And then this is the regular, uh, what's it called, the W126, uh, 603, 3.0 in uh, pre-chamber uh, socket size, well, thread size. So 140, Injector connected to a 603 uh, SDL pre-chamber and it works perfectly Okay Doesn't look too bad you can see that there's it was leaking right here around here Completely leaking out so there's compression leak on this this cylinder you can see it right here. Compression leaking out. Anyway, time to do the rest of them. That looks like a, a lot of carbon buildup. Literally, like. Wow. That is a lot of carbon buildup. Oh, cylinder walls look, look great. No scratches in them whatsoever, but someone recently honed them. Huh. Maybe recently this, maybe this engine was recently worked on because everything looks really nice, and really clean. Um, get you closer. You can see like, this looks like it's like freshly honed. All cylinders look very, very good condition. There's a lot of carbon buildup that just fell through the head, I think, when I was unbolting it. Oil fell through also. It's like a lot of carbon stuff. You see a carbon buildup. But pistons look in great condition. Doesn't look like there's a lot of no scratches, no nothing on it. Nice. That's great. I'm gonna take off the injection pump. I'll start, I'm gonna start disassembling the front. And then uh, take off the injection pump, water pump, pulley. And then take off the face. And then uh, then flip it upside down and then take out the, the oil pan. And then disassemble. We'll unbolt the, the pistons and then pull the pistons out. I'm going to number them so I know where it goes. Anyway, nice. So far the the head, I haven't looked at the head yet. Let's let's see the head. So the head, it looks like someone replaced the gasket before cuz it looks like they sprayed the the copper gasket stuff. This is a yeah, nice guess it's still good okay head looks great all the cylinders look great for 275,000 miles looks very nice not that much buildup whatsoever okay all the valves look very clean which is great I'm gonna have a machine shop when they take all the valves I'm gonna have them I forgot what they're called. Uh, valve lap them? Valve lash? I don't know. But make them uh, uh, sealed nicely. Just with like, the sanding them down. But the head looks great. Yeah. All the ports. Everything looks nice. The Okay. Well then, let's start disassembling the rest of this. We got it. Use the the jack handle as the cheater bar. Taking off the grip. Work like a charm. Got this thing out. I'm gonna 
take off the water pump right now. GoPro keeps cutting out, so I just switched to my phone. I took off the oil pan, as you can see, and uh, when I took off the gear, not the gear, sorry, the chain, the timing chain. It looks like it's some, I don't know if this is stock or if it's aftermarket, but it's some JWIC chain. Because there's a, there's a lot of what seems like new components in the inside like the the the, the this uh, what's it called the chain guide it looks almost like almost brand new like very de definitely does not look like it's been used for 275,000 miles definitely looks like it's been recently repaired so I'm gonna start taking out I'm gonna take out the oil pump this cover I don't know what that's for and then uh, take out the pistons one by one, and then take out the entire crankshaft. Okay, got number one out. So I failed a little bit. As you can see, everything's ready to go. Okay, crankshaft is ready to come out. I didn't unbolt the flywheel. I didn't take off the flywheel. So, as you can see, to lift it out, I have to pull it out that much. So I can't really pull out the crankshaft due to this being in the way. I'm gonna try to one more time shimmy it out. Maybe like if I like try to lift it up a little bit and then like push it to the side and like try to pull it out, it'll come out. But if not, I'm gonna have to grab the cherry picker, lift it up, unbolt this somehow, and then and then take out the crankshaft. Hopefully it goes well. I got all the pistons out. Main bearings are down in there. This entire area is covered in a whole bunch of Mercedes stuff. So hopefully this comes out uh, comes out easily. And I can just unbolt it. God bless. I don't think it's gonna work. Praise God. Got it off with difficult, not, not too difficultly. Praise God. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, man, this thing's heavy. Now it's time. I'm gonna take this head to a machine shop that I go to and uh, get it resurfaced. Just, not that it's warped, just so it is 100% good. I'm gonna get it resurfaced. I'm gonna have him replace the valve springs. I got deep puck uh, high performance valve springs and uh, change the valve stem seals and uh, reseat the valves. Uh, what else is he gonna do? Basically just clean up the entire head and then and then uh, next video will be fully reassembling everything with the uh, H-beam rods and all new gaskets, uh, main bearings, rod bearings, and uh, piston, piston rings, new piston rings. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. If you guys have any questions or comments about whatever I'm doing here, about the build, about the engine, or whatever components that you guys have, might want uh just leave a comment down below thank you guys for watching god bless you guys god bless america and you guys have a great day